And now as millions head out for the Memorial Day weekend, what local officials and law enforcement say to be aware of in order to make it to your destination on time and safely. Plus, lawmakers move closer to a deal over the nation's debt limit, the latest on negotiations as the deadline is extended. And later, terror 700 feet in the air after a plane passenger opens an exit door during flight in South Korea. That's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. And it appears more Americans are leaving town for the Memorial Day holiday weekend, at least out in California they are. This is a live shot of LAX in Los Angeles. The TSA expects the agency to screen more than 10 million people this weekend. The highways, of course, are expected to also be busy. AAA predicting more than 37 million Americans hitting the roads. Good evening, thanks for joining us. And for a lot of people, the holiday weekend usually means taking some time off and maybe planning a trip away. Talia Mohadeen has what you need to know whether you're traveling by plane or car this holiday weekend. Ahead of the summer's unofficial kickoff, travel at the Dane County Regional Airport this Memorial Day weekend is up. I just ran the numbers this morning. We're about 17% uh, above last year's travel numbers for the same weekend. And airport officials say it'll only go up from here. So to make sure you get where you need to go, they recommend showing up 90 minutes to two hours early. Uh, of course, it rarely takes that long. But just in case. And remember the 311 rule. Three ounces or less in a one quart container, one container per, or per passenger. Now, if you're traveling by car, the advice is a little different, of course. But State Patrol says the importance of getting out early and planning ahead is the same. Due to the heavy traffic flow, many people commuting to a, their destination uh, can be very un unpredictable. They say it's important to make sure your car is in good shape to get you to your destination both on time and safe. For their part, state troopers will have an increased presence with details around speed enforcement, OWIs, and the Click It or Ticket initiative. We just want to mitigate all the bad or unsafe factors that could happen and uh, clear the way for people trying to get where they're going. So we can all focus on what the holiday is really about. I, I did deploy to Afghanistan and I, uh, I did have some fallen comrades, so it's a, it's a day of mourning, but I'm happy I, I got to know those gentlemen that I served with. It was a, it, it's a, it's a tough thing, but it's a thing I'm proud of. So. Reporting in Madison, I'm Tehid Mahdeen, News 3 Now. State Patrol officials say the worst of the traffic on the interstate is going to be heading north of Madison, especially as you get closer to Wisconsin Dells, the destination for many travelers. As millions of Americans head out for the weekend, those hitting the road can expect to pay a bit less for gas. According to AAA, prices at the pump are down more than a dollar a gallon from what they were a year ago at this time. Meanwhile, heading overseas is more expensive than a year ago. But according to the travel site Hopper, domestic tickets are down about 19 percent. Also, hotel rooms are pricier up 11% from last year. You can find better deals, especially if you book at the last minute in major cities and stay off the beaten track outside of the main downtown areas. Hey, she also says another way to save is to put off flying until the fall when airfares are about 30% cheaper. Warm, sunny weather heading into the Memorial Day holiday weekend. Let's check your first warm forecast. Out on the weather patio tonight, we find Chief Meteorologist Gary Canolti. Nice night, Gary. Sure is, and today was a great day, and if you like today's weather, boy, just stick around because it's going to be like that the next few days. Let's take a look at the time lapse from the WIC TV Sky Cam. This is early this morning. Very little in the way of cloudiness during the day today. Uh, we put the time lapse in motion. You can see just a little bit of high cirrus clouds overhead, and that's pretty much about it. High temperatures today away from Lake Michigan, generally in the mid to upper 70s. Madison topped out at 74, but it was 78 in La Crosse, 79 in Boscobel. Notice closer to Lake Michigan, temperatures stayed in the 60s. That'll probably be the case again for tomorrow. And right now, uh, Milwaukee's at 55, but Madison's at 58, so there's not nearly as much of a temperature difference, although out to the west it is a little warmer temperatures in the 60s closer to the Mississippi River here in Dane County mainly uh, middle to upper 50s 53 in Middleton right now 57 degrees in Oregon and 58 degrees the current temperature in Sun Prairie look for mostly clear skies overnight not as cool as last night last night we were in the 30s tonight low 46 degrees and our temperatures keep going up from where we were today I'll take a look at how warm it'll get as we head into next week in just a few minutes a newly released complaint accuses Madison School District spokesperson Tim Lamonds of bullying, name calling, and retaliation. The complaint includes a timeline of dozens of incidents where Lamonds is accused of bullying fellow co workers to the point that several cited him as the reason for leaving their jobs with the district. 
Records also outline allegations of him bullying the Madison Police Department's public information officer and calling a local journalist a pig of a journalist. Lamans has denied those allegations. For more details, you can look for this story on channel3000.com. Meanwhile, in Milwaukee, a former attorney in Wisconsin will spend 60 days in jail after she was convicted of spitting on a 17-year-old. Stephanie Rapkin chose 60 days in House of Correction over a year of probation and 100 days of community service. The incident happened during a Black Lives Matter protest back in 2020. The judge did not hold back in court accusing Rapkin of lying on the stand during her trial. Words and actions matter. And in this particular case, I believe that you took the stand and you lied. You provided testimony that was not, that was in complete contradiction to the testimony you provided when interviewed to law enforcement. And for that, you need to be held accountable. Rapkin's case is not over. She's also charged with felony battery after prosecutors said she need a Shorewood police officer while they were arresting her at her home back in 2020. That battery case is expected to go to trial this coming August. The Portage Fire Department says multiple buildings at the Columbia County Recycling Center are a total loss after a recent fire there. In an update today, fire officials say that fire was considered extinguished about 26 hours after it started on Wednesday. Crews spent much of yesterday overhauling the site with the local excavation company and putting out any fires that remained in piles of refuse and recycling. Two firefighters sustained minor injuries during the course of the call. The cause of the fire has not yet been released. Meanwhile, in Blanchardville, officials issuing a boil water advisory there. A recent test showed there may be E. coli in their water supply. For now, residents should heat water being used for cooking, drinking, food preparation, and dishwashing to a rolling boil for at least one minute. People should also use caution when using water for bathing or hand washing. Village President Nicholas Crook says results of a sample taken today should be available by tomorrow afternoon. A plan for hundreds of millions of dollars to help support child care costs was introduced this week. It came as part of a plan to attract and retain workers in Wisconsin as lawmakers continue to debate the state budget. Republicans, though, were not on board with that plan. But I cannot imagine why it would be a good idea to throw $340 million at an agency who up until the last maybe year, I think it's more like months, has done nothing on this. It is critical for the state of Wisconsin that we meet the moment and invest in childcare. Democrats wanted the funds to be introduced through the state's economic development agency and they promised to reintroduce it later this year. Most lawmakers have headed home for the Memorial Day holiday weekend with no deal yet to raise the debt ceiling. Time is running short, though the Treasury Department did just extend its deadline. CBS News correspondent Willie James Inman has the latest on the negotiations from Washington. President Biden says he's optimistic about negotiations to increase the debt limit just hours after Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen sent this letter to Congress Friday afternoon. It says the U.S. will run out of money to pay its bills on June 5th, extending the deadline from June 1st. I'm hopeful we'll know by tonight whether we are going to be able to have a deal. Mr. Speaker, Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy also remains positive despite the looming deadline. We know it's a crunch time. We know it's not easy. But we're going to make sure we're not just trying to get an agreement. We're trying to get something that's worthy of the American people. Sources tell CBS News the current framework for a deal includes capping overall federal spending levels for the next two years. Military and veterans funding would increase slightly. Domestic spending would dip slightly or remain flat. $10 billion in funding to ease IRS backlogs could also be shifted to pay for other needs. A major source of contention is the Republican demand for work requirements for some who receive federal benefits. Work requirements are critical. Americans like clothing store owner Annika Hobbs are concerned about the possibilities of a U.S. default and how it could affect the economy. We're here to succeed and, and you know, the bottom line is that we are here to make money. This is, this is our livelihood. Economists say default could send stock markets into freefall and trigger a recession. Willie James Inman, CBS News, Washington. 
Lawmakers will return to Washington on Tuesday after the holiday weekend. Special Counsel John Durham slated to testify before the House Judiciary Committee next month. Attorney General William Barr tapped him back in 2020 to investigate some issues surrounding the 2016 election. Last month, Durham issued a report that said the FBI should not have launched a full investigation into connections between former President Trump's campaign and Russia. House Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan invited Durham to testify that same day. His appearance is now scheduled for June 21st. New documents released by the FBI show there was a plot to assassinate Queen Elizabeth II back in the 1980s. A cache of 103 pages were posted to the FBI's online records site. The files cover preparations for several trips the late Queen made to the U.S., including an official tour of the West Coast back in 1983. Now, one document appears to detail a tip gathered before that visit from San Francisco police regarding a phone call from a man who claimed to be planning an attack after his daughter was killed in Northern Ireland. Drama in the skies overseas as a passenger opens an exit door on a South Korean plane in mid-flight. Authorities say a man sitting next to the emergency door opened it as the plane flew at 700 feet just minutes before it was set to touch down. The Asiana Airlines Airbus landed safely and police detained the passenger who admitted to causing the mid-flight scare. His motive is not yet known. The plane was carrying nearly 200 people. Authorities say a dozen people were taken to the hospital with breathing problems and minor injuries. Still more ahead on News 3 Now at 10, including Gary with the complete holiday forecast. But first, local volunteers prepare to head to Guam after a devastating typhoon rocks the island. We're back after this. You're watching News 3 Now at 10, winner of the best evening newscast by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association. It's the Portage Furniture Store's customer appreciation sale on now, with a huge in-stock inventory of top brands for every room in your home, including all new power lift chairs and always free delivery. The Portage Furniture Store's customer appreciation sale going on now. With an exciting new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer activities. Sorry. Get 3.99% APR for 48 months on many of Toyota's most popular models. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own, many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. Join the circle of life at the Lion King. Now on stage at Overture Center through May 28th only. Get your tickets today at overture.org. Get four Arby's Classic Roast Beef Sandwiches for just 10 bucks. That's one for now, one after that, one to celebrate the first two, and one more because that's how many four is. Arby's, we have the meat. With an exciting new Toyota, you can go out and enjoy all your favorite summer activities. Sorry. Get 3.99% APR for 48 months on many of Toyota's most popular models. Your summer starts here. Toyota, let's go places. It's the Portage Furniture Store's customer appreciation sale on now. With a huge in-stock inventory of top brands for every room in your home, including all new custom sofas and always free delivery. The Portage Furniture Store's customer appreciation sale going on now. News 3 Now's call for action team gets results. We're taking action for you. Nearly 700 cases closed, more than a half million dollars recovered, and we're not finished yet. When you need help, call for action only on News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. 
Welcome back to the world's largest broadfest getting underway at Willow Island at the Align Energy Center today. The three-day event offers free music, family-friendly fun, and of course, fantastic food to help kick off the unofficial start of summer. Since 1983, Broadfest has sold more than four million brats to help raise almost two million dollars to benefit some 100 plus local charities. Boating is expected to pick up this weekend and that means officials are extending hours at Tenney Lock on Lake Mendota. The lock provides navigation between Lakes Mendota and Monona on the Yahara River chain. Tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow, it will be open from 9 to 11 and then on Sunday it's open from 10 to 10. On Monday, the lock will be open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now, something to keep in mind, lake levels are lower than they normally are this time of year because of dry weather and low amounts of snow melt this spring. In terms of on the lake this time of year, we are a little bit lower than we, we normally are, so just um, be cautious when you get into to, um, areas that um, that are, are lower. Um, just careful for your prop and, and stay in some deeper water if you can. The remaining two locks, Babcock on Lake Wabisa and La Follette on Lake Caganza, remain closed because officials don't want lake flow levels to drop any lower. Meanwhile, beachgoers are being urged to use caution and stay vigilant in the waters following multiple shark attacks from Hawaii to New Jersey. That is prompting officials to step up efforts to protect beachgoers, adding more lifeguards, drones, and posting warning signs. While shark attacks are extremely rare, experts say if you see schools of fish or seals gathering, don't go swimming with them because a shark may be nearby and it could mistake you for its next meal. Local volunteers with the American Red Cross are headed to Guam to help the island recover from a typhoon. Now, much of the island is without power and also without drinking water. Some areas, including the airport, are flooded. Several structures have been damaged or destroyed in mudslides. And a Red Cross disaster program manager says this is the farthest trip she's taken so far. Responses like this, the, the idea behind um, the help we provide is really that care and comfort. The idea to get folks in a place that's safe, warm, a place to put their head, um, get some you know meals in them, um, have like a quick um, like medical triage. You know, we don't have physicians, but we have health services volunteers. Now, if you'd like to help or make a donation, look for the Red Cross link in our story at channel3000.com. And check this out, a water spot, spout spotted swirling along the coast of southern Florida today as the National Weather Service warned of thunderstorms developing in the region. Well, the person here recorded the video, says the funnel stayed offshore, disappeared about 15 minutes later. They added no boats were nearby. Meanwhile, you couldn't ask for better weather as we head in to the holiday weekend, and Gary's back with a complete forecast. Don't have to worry about water spouts on Lake Mendota this weekend. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> if there's not going to be any clouds tomorrow, just a few for Sunday and for Memorial Day Monday. Three things you need to know in a forecast. Well, they're all good things, I think. Uh, we'll start out with dry conditions through at least Wednesday of next week. High temperatures upper 70s for tomorrow, but 80s for Sunday and Memorial Day Monday, and also Tuesday as well. By Tuesday, we'll be in the upper 80s, and we could see our first 90s of the year for Wednesday and Thursday, with little in the way of rain chances even toward the end of the week. Our Memorial Day weekend forecast, 77 for high tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Notice the winds pretty light, too, out of the east and southeast, so it will be a little cooler, closer to the Great Lakes. So Milwaukee, uh, up towards Sheboygan, Manitowoc, that area might be a little cooler uh, as it has been the last couple of days, but inland uh, temperatures will be well into the upper 70s and low 80s here on Sunday and low 80s for Memorial Day Monday with partly sunny skies and no rain expected. In fact, high temperatures over the next 10 days going up to around 90 for Wednesday and Thursday, dropping back just a little bit into next weekend, but still above normal. Highs uh, low to mid 80s for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday of the following week, and all three of those days are expected to be dry as well. If you take a look at future track precipitation, this is through uh, Wednesday afternoon. Notice no rain, and that includes this weekend, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And then as we head into Thursday and Friday, there will be at least a slight chance for some showers and thunderstorms. Now, precipitation will be more spotty in thunderstorms. Uh, they could bring uh, some heavy downpours in some small areas and other areas nearby may miss out on the rain altogether. But we're looking at maybe around a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain uh, from Madison to the north and west and even less over parts of southeastern Wisconsin. High temperatures today, 
Mid 70s in Madison, near 80 in La Crosse. Notice the 60s closer to Lake Michigan. Again, that'll be the case again for tomorrow. Chicago at 70, but to the west, 85 Sioux Falls, 83 in Omaha, large area of 80s. To the west of that, more cloud cover and some showers and thunderstorms uh, kept temperatures in the 70s. But notice the upper level winds. They're swirling around an area of high pressure, not only near the ground, but also uh, aloft. So basically, this just kind of keeps all the weather systems out to the west of us and sends them northward into Canada. So you can see the moisture just kind of heading northward into uh, the Dakota, east, uh, western Dakotas and into southern Canada and it leaves our part of the Midwest pretty much high and dry. And you can see temperatures still pretty mild here, that high pressure system located just to our north and to our east, and those temperatures right now, 50s across most of Wisconsin, although the farther west you get, those temperatures are in the 60s. Minneapolis still at 70 degrees. And this is going to be typical of what we see over the next couple of nights, but we just add a couple of degrees to those temperatures, not only during the day, but also at night. 77 for the high tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Uh, just a couple of degrees warmer than the 74 for today. Planning your day across Dane County, 77 Cottage Grove, 77 in Stoughton, 77 for the high temperature in Verona. Across the rest of southern Wisconsin, get Milwaukee a little bit cooler, 68 degrees, but you get inland to Watertown, they're at 73, and then by the time uh, you get to La Crosse and Camp Douglas, temperatures will be in the upper 70s. First warm 7 to 10 day forecast, again, those temperatures go up a couple of degrees each day, not only during the daytime highs, but nighttime low temperatures as well. So we're in the mid-60s by the time we get to the end of next week. Just slight chances for afternoon or evening showers and thunderstorms on Thursday and Friday. Some areas may miss out on the rain altogether. Temperatures drop off a couple of degrees for next weekend, but it stays dry into the start of the following week. Still to come, see how a former Badger made history again on the ice. That's coming up next in sports. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Every single day, we help families that have been tragically impacted in truck crashes. And you'll never pay us a fee until we win your case. Truck crash? Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. I had a lot of bad days with gout, but that one took the wedding cake. Even with medicine, my uric acid was still too high to stop painful gout buildup. Then a gout specialist told me about Cristexa. Cristexa is a prescription medicine for adults with gout whose symptoms are not controlled by other gout medicines. I learned Cristexa quickly starts working to break down gout buildup. Cristexa is an infused medicine. Serious life-threatening allergic reactions can occur while taking Cristexa. Tell your doctor right away if you have symptoms such as shortness of breath, trouble breathing, dizziness, itching, or swelling of the throat or tongue. Cristexa is not recommended if you have high levels of uric acid without a history of gout. Do not take Cristexa if you have a rare disorder called G6PD deficiency or favism. Before receiving Cristexa, tell your doctor if you have a history of heart problems in all the medicines you take. Cristexa may cause gout flare-ups, allergic reactions, nausea, bruising, sore throat, constipation, chest pain, and vomiting. I received Cristexa for about six months. Now I'm in control, not gout. Find a doctor who specializes in gout at goutdocnow.com. This is how legends are. 2024 Chevy Silverado HD with Duramax Diesel. And the Chevy Silverado with powerful Turbomax engine. No matter what route you take, there's a Chevy truck to get you there. Find new roads. Get 1.9% financing on all 2023 Silverado 1500 LT Turbomax pickups or current Chevy owners get 5250 total cash allowance when you trade in an eligible vehicle. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. action and save on stressless seating at the Century House. Now get $400 off all classic power recliners, signature base recliners and ottomans, and cross base recliners and ottomans. And get $400 off most sofas and love seats. Imagine how much you can save building your dream sectional. Shop the Century House, 3420 University Avenue in Madison. You are a friend, a neighbor, a family at heart. 
We are Gruber Law Offices, your ally and your advocate. If you've been injured in a trucking accident, you need Gruber Law Offices to fight for you. One call, that's all. There's something infatuating about an older athlete playing like they're still in their prime. LeBron James continues breaking barriers at 38. We couldn't believe it when Tom Brady won a Super Bowl at, th at 43. But what about Joe Pavelski? At 38 years old, the former Badger continues making history. Last night, he scored his 73rd career NHL postseason goal, passing Alexander Ovechkin for the most among active players. He scored 9 and 12 games in the playoffs so far this year, the most ever by a 38-year-old. And on the brink of elimination, this goal last night extended his Dallas Stars postseason run. It's one of his four postseason game winners this year. And for Pavelski, he'll even admit it means more at 38. Yeah, you probably appreciate them a little bit more. Um, they, they feel just as good as they did as some of the other ones. It was a tremendous feeling for sure and glad we can, you know, play another game and go from there and try to extend it. When Steve Stricker won his fifth senior major title a couple weeks ago, the Edgerton native was understandably on top of the world. Only problem, he missed his daughter Izzy's birthday. This time, though, he made up for it at the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship, inviting the 18-year-old University of Wisconsin golf commit to caddy for him this weekend. Growing up, I never went really on a ton of trips with them, and so spending quality time like this with golf around us. We do it all the time, but this means a lot more. Here's Dad out on the links. We pick things up at hole 14. Strick looking for birdie and easy money for the veteran. He gets down to seven under. And then on 15, this is what you got to see. Check out this masterpiece. Strick shooting for eagle. The veteran just has such a nice feel close to the pin and shows it off there. It drops right in. He'd finish the day at seven under, sitting in third place. To the diamond where the Brewers were looking to bounce back after being shut out yesterday. They took an early lead, but the Giants' bats were just too big. Mitch Hanniger tomahawks a fastball over the center field wall to give San Fran a 2-1 lead in the second. And then in the third, Giants' lead keeps growing. Brett Wisely lifts a three-run bomb, and the floodgates were opened. Giants take this one, 15-1, the final. Celtics staved off elimination last night in the Eastern Conference Finals, beating the Heat 110-97. to Former Stevens Point standout Sam Hauser put a bow on it, knocking down this deep three all the way from downtown. Game six is tomorrow in Miami. And just under 100 days before the Luke Fickle era is underway at Wisconsin, the Badger coach added Jack Cooper as his new senior defensive analyst today. Cooper spent the last three seasons in the FCS as Rhode Island's defensive coordinator replaces Michael Caputo, one of just a few members left over from Paul Chris' staff. We'll be right back after this. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at ShopGo Optical. Better eye care, you'll see. ShopGo Optical welcomes more insurance plans than ever. Call to book an exam and verify coverage. Get up to 50% off list prices on hundreds of items at the huge memorial sale at Slumberland Furniture. Incredible deals, like this recliner, free when you purchase the reclining sofa, or these incredible beds, both at our lowest price ever, or this beefy recliner marked way down. How about a Lazy Boy recliner as low as $3.75? Or $4.99 gets you a Sealy Posturepedic mattress. Plus, we'll throw in a seven-piece bedding bundle free, up to 50% off at the huge memorial sale at Slumberland Furniture. Do not miss this one. Looks like they finally got rid of that trip hazard. They pump it full of mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Where are the patched holes? Where's the splashed mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Concrete lifting technologies can quickly raise and level any concrete surface using cutting-edge foam technology made in Wisconsin. Fast and accurate and eco-friendly. How did those guys do it? Where are the holes? Where's the mud? It ain't mud, Jack. Dot com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection is here 24 hours a day. Seven days a week for all your residential and commercial plumbing services. From installation, repairs, and maintenance to complete sewer and drain cleaning, we've got you covered. Visit MononaPFP.com. Monona Plumbing and Fire Protection, a name you can trust when service is a must. 
For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Now lease an F-150 STX for $419 a month for 36 months, plus get 1,000 trade assist cash only at your Wisconsin and UP Ford dealers. Celebrate Memorial Day at Brothers Main, where unbeatable appliance deals come with expert advice. Enjoy special prices and free delivery on top brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid. Visit us today and feel like family at Brothers Main. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care, you'll see. Schedule your comprehensive eye exam at shopco.com or bring in your outside prescription. Channel 3000 Plus, watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. Finally, tonight, a cat and some dogs rain to the runway with a Met Gala-inspired fashion at the Pet Gala this week in New York. The event was the brainchild of Pat, pet fashion expert Anthony Rubio, who emulated a dozen of the most popular designs from this year's event. The designer said the outfits are quite labor-intensive because there are no patterns to cut after. <laughs> Speaking of dogs, I was just watching that dog. His dog, uh, his chihuahua, Kimba, there, there's, there's oh, Kimber right no, there. So, my no, no, no. Dressed yes. as a cat. Yes. More specifically, he was imitating Jared Leto dressed as Carl Lagerfeld's famed cat. I you don't know, know I, anything about it. I just know Joe, Gary's dog. Yeah, we had we he had him, him you know, as a shark, you know, with, with like a shark outfit and his head sticking <laughs> out. Yeah, that was pretty the impressive. The costume's bigger than Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, to keep him warm, a little chilly tonight, but mm -hmm. uh, right now there's a live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam. Really nice out there. Temperatures upper 50s across most of southern Wisconsin. Uh, here in Dane County, we're looking at uh, 51 right now in Middleton, uh, 58 degrees in Madison, and 58 in Deerfield. Look for a low tonight of about uh, 50 degrees, and then a high tomorrow about 77, and those temperatures go up from there. It looks really nice for the Memorial Day weekend and for much of next week as well. All right. Sounds good, Gary. Thank you, and thanks for joining us. Produce Free Now at 10. Do something good, and have a wonderful weekend.